It was my own voice, but it was not coming from my mouth. And I was like, no shit. What? What? And they're like, Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, welcome. I'm Moonshine, and today is going to be the first video of the 100 Head Challenge. If you don't know what the 100 Head Challenge is, it, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. I, I think you draw 100 heads, it's challenging. Right now, I'm at the 55 head mark, and I just, I just don't want to draw any more portraits. Like, I'm just kind of like, man, I want to draw something else. But like, then it wouldn't be much of a challenge, I guess. And so like, the main purpose of this challenge for me is like, I want to push myself outside of my comfort zone. I want to get more experience drawing more people of color, different facial features, different unique facial features like Roman noses, uh, the Nubian noses, like those nice uh, like fox eyes or cat eyes, um, bigger lips, two-toned lips. I love seeing all different kinds of artwork showing all that representation and I just, I want to work on my skill and I want to join the party. It looks like a lot of fun. And so I thought the 100 head challenge would be a really nice way to start working on that. So with that in mind, I definitely don't think I'm in any position to be directing or educating anyone. And I think there are plenty of other creators on this wonderful platform that are way more qualified to teach you how to draw a portrait than me. So with that in mind, I wanted to also kind of just do little story times, I guess, over these 100 head challenges. <laughs> so with that in mind, let's just get into story times. <laughs> so since I missed Halloween, uh, I'm not gonna let that stop me, because honestly, every day has the potential to be just as horrifying if you just believe. So. Let's share some spoopy stories. So, I've grown up, I've always believed in like ghosts and paranormal like entities and cryptids and things like that all throughout my life. Well, <laughs> at some point when certain things start happening, it becomes less of a why not and more of a oh god why me <laughs> so like <laughs> for example uh my great grandmother used to go to a lot of rummage sales and yard sales and estate sales uh if it was an olympic sport she would have taken the gold for a really good price also but um <laughs> anyway <laughs> so basically she went to an estate sale once and she got this really beautiful solid vanity dresser set and uh it had been in my family since she had gotten it and when she passed my grandma had it and then when my grandma passed my mom took it and so basically it's it's been with the family for a long time at this point and i was helping around the house a lot and i was probably about 17 at this time and a, a lot more had happened paranormal-wise at this point, but this is just a story that, uh, it sticks with me forever, and when I think of a scary story to tell at the drop of a hat, this usually is at the forefront of my mind. So, uh, basically, our house was a really long kind of eye formation, so, like, one end was, like, uh, the living room and the den kind of area and my mom had her, her uh, office set up in there and on the opposite end of the house were like the bedrooms and uh, so she had asked me to go and pick up her laundry basket from her room because I had just finished doing my laundry and if I could do hers and I was like mm, all right yeah for context, it wasn't that I minded helping my mother with chores, uh, it was just that uh, that end of the house tended to hold a lot of bad energy, and a lot of it came from her room. So just for context, that was why I was kind of apprehensive at the time to do that chore. That's all. 
So I go into her room, which is where the vanity dresser and the mirror is, because it's hers now at this point, and I lean down to pick up the laundry basket, and from directly above and behind me, I hear, Mom, can you come here please? And it was so stark and so bone chilling. It was my own voice, but it was not coming from my mouth. I stood straight as a pin. I whipped around and I looked at exactly where I heard the voice coming from. And it was from that damn mirror. Oh, ooh, it is creepy. I will never forget the look on my own face because for the first time in my life, I did not feel like I was looking at my true self. I felt scared that I had come face to face with a doppelganger like an imposter, but what was looking back at me, I swear on all that is holy, it looked like it was scared it had been caught. And it had, because my mom even called out, oh, so I'm mom now all of a sudden, huh? I was raised with a lot of British television. And so ever since I was a baby, I've never called her mom. It's <laughs> even saying it, I'm, it's really hard for me to say it. It's mum. That's how I call her. I always call her my mum. Like, like, like Stevie. <laughs> but, <laughs> so like, it was just so odd and out of place that even she commented on it. And that wasn't me. But when that happened and I heard her call back that joke, I instantly, I just, don't come back here, don't come back here, and I bolted. Ooh, I am not the kind of person to stick around and find out how a story ends when the story is shaping up to be that kind of story, you feel me? Like, nah, -uh, no sir, no ma'am, no they, no them. I am not looking to find that out. So, <laughs> so that was the story of how I met my doppelganger. <laughs> it's- I look back and I laugh on it, but at the time I was actually genuinely terrified and I left the house for like... I think I left it for probably a week before I came back. I was- I was really shaken. It- it chilled me to the bone. So, another spooky story, okay. So, I'm gonna tell you about my watcher. Uh, I actually didn't know what to call this entity. I never saw what he looked like. There were several. There were a few um, that would follow me. But this one in particular, he would be very careful to only show his aura. I could see his outline. And I'll draw it for you one day, maybe. That would be an interesting video, maybe, to draw what I've seen. So, this man, he probably would have been about six, six foot nine, I'd say closer towards seven foot tall. He was very tall, slender built, and he would always linger in doorways. His hair was kind of wavy, you could tell from the silhouette. I don't think, if I wasn't an artist, if I hadn't at this time in my life already been in drawing classes or been doing studies of portraits and whatnot, I don't think I would have been able to maintain as vivid of a memory of this as I do. Silver lining, I guess. So, <laughs> his outline was always a really bright orange, almost like a burning red. And I remember at one point, I mentioned it to my friend when they were staying the night at my house. Um, I was telling them a little bit about him and they seemed particularly interested. And they're, this friend in particular tends to be a bit of a skeptic, but they are interested in paranormal. It's, you know, they were the same as me as far as like finding it interesting to, you know, imagine and just look up and it's fun, fascinating to think about. So I was like, okay, well, uh, he lingers in doorways, you know, yada 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 is about what I just told you. I tell them all of this and they go, okay. 
and they look down at their phone and they start tapping on their phone and I was like, uh, what are you doing? So uh, my friend, they were like tapping on their phone and then they kind of like covered their mouth a little bit and they were like, oh, oh, and I was like, what? And they're like, I think I've seen him. And I was like, no shit, what, what? And they're like, well, I think I saw him. Like, is he like, does he linger in your bedroom doorway a lot? And I never said that, but that is where he most frequently will watch, is from the bedroom doorway. And my friend showed me their phone and they had looked up what those colors of aura sometimes meant and we were both kind of spooked a little bit because it was not the best thing. <laughs> so we were like, oh, okay, so he might be a little angry. I think he has some resentment or a burning hatred. <laughs> this is... Awesome. awesome. So great. So, yeah. Uh, I basically, uh, <laughs> those are a couple of, of the paranormal experiences that I personally have encountered. So, the first two stories I shared were kind of spooky, kind of creepy, kind of wow. I know. So, <laughs> for this third story, I, it's... It's still very spooky, very creepy, very wow, but it's not paranormal. <laughs> so, it's it's kind of funny. It wasn't at the time. It wasn't at the time, again, but I look back on it now and I laugh. So, I hope you'll be able to laugh with me. I was about 14 years old. I had started at a new school. I had made some new friends. And this school, the curriculum was insane. Oh my god. I'm in my pajamas. I'm winding down. It's about 8 o'clock at night. And the neighborhood we live in, uh, things could get a little rowdy sometimes. It wouldn't always. Uh, I forgot that my textbooks were still in my backpack in my mom's car. And that I actually had some homework that was going to be due the next day. And so I thought, oh crap, okay, I'm gonna go get that real quick. And I went outside, and the only thing I can describe it to you is that it was one of those moments where your intuition, your, the, hair, the hairs on your neck are standing on end. You don't know why. You feel like you're being watched. It is exactly how they describe it in the movies. You can't put your finger on it, but you know you're being watched and you're, you're kind of looking around and it's just hand on the back of your neck like, oh my God, creepy, what the hell? And so I go to the car and I mean, I still felt creeped out and I'm, you know, afraid of the dark, so already I'm on edge. So I thought, okay, well, it's all right, Moon, you got this, you got this, we're chilling. It's dark out, the fence is shut. We had a security fence because of the area we lived in. And I was like, oh yeah, no one can no one can clear that fence. Yeah, fast forward to me myself clearing that fence later. But anyway. I pulled my backpack out of the car. I shut the trunk of the car, and something in my mind was just something told me. Don't panic. Whatever you do, don't panic. You were fine. And I was like, what? <laughs> I turned around and I just looked up because this house that I lived in had this huge oak tree and this huge pine tree like they were massive it was like a forest and so I looked up into the pine tree that I used to climb on the daily and looking down at me there was a man uh Hmm. Moon.exe has stopped working, folks. I tell you what, when it comes to fight or flight, I have never been built for flying, but I sure as hell grew some wings and flew that night. I took off. I, well, yeah. At first, I kind of had my, com my composure. I was like, okay, don't panic. Okay, don't panic. Okay, don't panic. And so I'm like, I pretended I didn't see him. And I kept my gaze wandering around, looking around. 
And then I thought, that's enough, let's carry on, shall we? And I walked inside and I had passed the car and as soon as I had stepped on this little twig, it snapped and I thought it was him. And that was when I thought, oh no, not today. And I booked it and I got out of there and I got out of there fast. And (laughs) I will never forget that night. I ran inside, I slammed the door shut, locked it, and I screamed at my mother. I said, Mom, there's a man in our tree! And my mom was on her computer, and she goes, What? (laughs) And I said, There's a man in our tree! He was looking right at me! And she just wheeled out from her chair, got up, and she... (laughs) She flipped open her little flip phone, put it on her shoulder, put it to her ear, called 911, and she grabbed the floodlight with one hand, and she grabbed a butcher knife with the other, and she just started walking outside. She was, she was ready. She, oh my goodness. Um, as far as these uh, portrait studies that I've done on this day of the challenge, I have to say uh, that portrait number five was my favorite of the day. I just, oh my gosh, I just, I love the texture of the sweater, I love the reflection of the glasses, the softness of the lips, I just, I don't know, I feel like I showed a lot of progress with that, and I mean, it's not perfect, but I think it's a pretty big step in the right direction. Which portrait from today was your favorite? Mm, let me know. Also, do you have any spooky stories you'd feel comfortable sharing? I love swapping scary stories with people. It is one of my favorite things ever. Oh my gosh. If you have any to share, feel free to let me know. I would love to read them. Uh, as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video entertaining at the very least. Uh, stay safe out there. Uh, carry some salt on you. <laughs> Uh, don't go calling down the evil spirits of darkness anytime soon. <laughs> Alright? Just take care of yourself. <laughs> so, as always, uh, take care of yourself. Stay hydrated. Make sure you're working on the right layer. And if your reflection starts answering for you, that's when you need to go walk away. Until next time, I'm out of here for now. Bye! Feeling weird, I can't seem to focus good enough Nothing's really clear, sometimes it could be a little tough I just need to feel like the end's in sight for me But, let's be really real, anxiety can foggy all this stuff I've been feeling weird, I can't seem to focus good enough Nothing's really clear, sometimes it could be a little tough I just need to feel like the end's in sight for me But